In this episode, we are going to look at five of my favorite extensions that I use nearly every day, and I think you're really going to like them. So if you're new to this channel, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't already, hit that like button too, because it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Now let's just jump straight into this video. The first extension we're going to look at is Google's Lighthouse. So Google's Lighthouse is an open source automated tool for helping us improve the quality of our web pages. It allows us to run test reports on any page that we're working on. So right now I'm just going to run for a report on dev.to. It takes a few seconds, but then you'll see this lovely very detailed report on everything to do with this site. So as you can see, we have the URL here and you can actually see what way it's rated. So dev.to has great stuff here. The performance is a little low. And the nice part about all of these things is it gives us some action points or things we could look at for improving our sites. Like here are some opportunities that could make dev.to a little faster. So we could remove some unused JavaScript, eliminate some render blocking resources, and then there's a few other bits and pieces. But as you can see with all of the lists here, unless they are perfect, they will give you some great little action points. And what I like to do when I'm starting with a new client, especially if I'm improving an old product, I'll run this report and I'll save it like this. And I can actually save this as a PDF when I do the print expanded and I can hand it to them and then also run a report when I'm finished working on the site. So to show the improvements they've gotten from my work. Now let's jump into the next extension. The next extension is DQ's Axe. So Axe is an accessibility testing tool. Now, I'm going to run this on Twitter in a second because it's probably the most likely place you'll be attacked for not having the best accessibility in the world. So they have a free Chrome extension that you can install. As you can see, I already have it here. So let's jump over to Twitter. And inside your Google Dev Tools, you get this extra tab for Axe here. When you click on that, you'll open up this little panel here. Now you can click the analyze button and it'll run a little check on whatever page you're on and give you some feedback on things you should be looking at. So here we found 41 issues and you can click into these and it will give you a little bit more. So as you can see, when I click this, this issue, we're not 100% sure it's actually a problem use the information we provide to decide if it's a problem or not. So again, these aren't all definites that you need to fix, but they are good pointers in the right direction that will make sure that your accessibility uh, is as good as you can get it. So I am a big fan of this, especially if you're working on public services here in Europe, that you have to have a double A with CAG standard. So it is important to have tools like this to make your life much easier. The next extension is Wappalizer. And the Wappalizer Chrome extension is perfect for nosy people like myself because it lets you identify the technologies that are being used on a lot of websites and most websites from what I've seen. And here they have a free Chrome extension which you can install. You, as you can see, I already have this installed. It has been one of my favorites for a while. If we jump over into sites, we can go over to this extension then. We can open it up and get a good look inside to see. And surprising, as you can imagine, on the Next.js site, they are using Next.js. It's hosted here on Versal uh, or Vercel. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Google Analytics and other things in here. And we jump over here to the MongoDB site, which might have a little more of an interesting profile. And we can see here that they're using the likes of React, Highlight JS, JS Deliver, and Amazon CloudFront for their CDNs, a little bit of jQuery, which they're 
50% sure they still have some, so it might not be there. Bootstrap and a few other analytics tools. So I love just when I'm on a new site, clicking this open just to be nosy and see what people are doing. The next extension is Go Full Page, which lets us take a full page screenshot. Now I've been using this a ton recently just because it's the easiest way, especially while remote, to show people what I've been working on or what things look like in their whole view if I don't have something up on a test environment or somewhere that they can actually go in and have a look. So you can grab the extension from the Chrome Web Store and I'm going to use it on a site I've been recently building to show you how it works. And we can just click the Go Full Page Capture. It zips on through. And as you can see here, it gives me a full nice screenshot here. I can download this as an image or as a PDF. And this is just excellent for being able to share on an email. So let's just open it up in a PDF. So yeah, this is just one of those ones to have there because when you need it, it's going to be nice to not have to think about it. And then to see an example of one of the PNGs it generates, you can just click here and it will give you a lovely full screenshot like this. So as you can see, super handy and it stitches the image together perfectly. The last extension I'm going to look at isn't exactly tech related, but it helps give the illusion that I am a professional and that is Grammarly. So Grammarly is a free extension that helps you write better English uh, vocabulary and does a spell check in all your typing. So it works on nearly anything you can type in. So it's been awesome for all my blog posts and writing emails every day. And you can grab it from, for free on the Chrome Web Store. And just to give you an example of how cool this is, let's jump over to my email for a second. And if I was typing an email here and I'm about to tell somebody that I am the goodest speller, I can hit that and immediately Grammarly picks up that I am not the goodest speller. And it says it should be good. And it also notices when I replace that word that it doesn't make sense in English. So we can change that to I am a good speller. Now, when I send this email to whoever, they will really think I am a good speller when all along it was actually Grammarly. You can also get alternatives for words and things when you uh, play around with this. And you can even pick your tone to make sure you are hitting it right. So here you can set goals. Now, some of these features might be from paid features. I'm not too sure because I've been using the paid one for a long time. But I remember that I didn't really feel like I had to change. And it was only because I was making so much content that I thought I should change. So if you have any extensions that I didn't mention that you think are noteworthy or that should definitely be included in any developer's extensions, just leave them in the comments below. And if I haven't tried them, I'd love to try them out. And until next time, happy coding.